Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at a webcam. It's called the Tiny by Obsbot. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Ozbot sent me the Tiny for review, and it's got a very interesting story. It started life out on Indiegogo. The Tiny was pitched as an AI-powered PTZ webcam, which means pan, tilt, and zoom. The whole premise behind it is the ability to make video phone calls with absolute freedom. The camera will follow you around, and it has motion controls. That's right, it's got AI tracking with auto framing, gesture controls that allows you to select or cancel a target or zoom in or out and it also has intelligent shooting with AI auto exposure and smart white balance. The camera also has a fairly odd shape and that's due to the fact that it's got a two axis gimbal. It has a tilt function and it also has a pan function. And for those of you that are curious, this camera will do 1080p at 60 frames a second. And that is pretty rare for webcams. It's also the settings that I have it on right now. Included in the box is the Obspot Tiny Camera, a magnetic monitor mount. So if you want the webcam sitting on top of your monitor, they included a monitor mount that's magnetic. It's easy to set up and easy to take down. And lastly, they included a USB-C to USB cable. On the back of the webcam, there's a USB-C port as well as a DC power port, but there was no DC power cable included. So I'm not quite sure what the port's for. There's also a threaded adapter on the bottom of the webcam if you do want to mount it to a tripod. The Obspot Tiny is not a light webcam, so I was kind of curious to see how it would do mounted to the top of my laptop. And the answer was not very well. Immediately as I mounted this thing, it tried to tip my laptop over and it actually started pulling my screen down too. If my screen was at a 90 degree angle, there wasn't an issue at all, but anything other than 90 degrees and well, this happens. Now, fun fact, the Obspot Tiny says it works with both Windows and Mac, but it also works with my Chromebook. Even the gimbal seemed to be working. Now I've got the Obspot plugged back into my PC, running 1080p resolution at 60 frames a second, and it's running really well. I haven't changed anything in regard to the color profile or any kind of camera settings whatsoever. Everything right now is on auto. Now I've been having a lot of fun with the Obspot Tiny Cam software. This software is optional. The camera is just plug and play, but the software also lets you goof around quite a bit. So if I take a look here, I can turn this dial and change the position of the camera. I can raise it or drag it around and just change things. I mean, you can change things manually on the camera if you want to, but doing it through the software is a lot of fun. And I can also click the button that says tap lock. And what this does is it enables the tracking. So watch what happens as I move around the room here, the camera will follow me and my head, which is, which is incredible. So watch this as I stand up and I'm back in frame. This is pretty neat overall and a pretty cool feature. The software also lets you manually control the zoom, so you can zoom up to two times. And I'm pretty sure the AI tracking still works when you're completely zoomed in. I'm noticing a bit of stuttering here, and that's probably because my head is so big and it's trying to keep up with everything but it's doing a really good job and I'm moving around quite a bit here. So overall, I am extremely impressed with the AI tracking. The camera also has built-in gesture controls. So if I wanted to zoom in the camera, I just have to hold my hand in an L here and it zooms right in. If I wanted to zoom out, well, there we go. If I wanted to enable AI tracking, I just hold my hand up like this and the camera will lock onto me. And from here, the camera will follow around. And if I wanna shut it off, I hold my hand up again and move around and you can see the camera is no longer following. For audio performance, I've been using the Electro Voice RE20. It's the standard microphone I use on this YouTube channel. So what I'm going to do now is shut it off and let you listen to the onboard microphone in the camera. Now you're listening to the audio directly from the Osbot Tiny. The first thing I noticed when I switched over to the webcam microphone is that it came in extremely loud. I had to turn down the audio on my computer to avoid clipping. I'm guessing it comes in extremely loud to pick you up if you're far away from the camera. So what I'm going to do is walk away from the camera. So I'm getting up out of my chair right now and I'm heading to the back of the room. One thing I did notice though is that the video sometimes seems to stutter as the gimbal moves around quite a bit. And also something I'm noticing, if you talk with your hands quite a bit, you might accidentally trigger the gestures. So if you are on this camera and you talk with your hands kind of like I do, just try to keep them fairly low or else your gestures might get picked up. Like I just raised my hand there and I think I turned off facial tracking. No, it's still on, okay, good. 
Uh, but I can see the blue light flickering, registering my gestures as I'm just talking and moving around. Normally now, something I do want to point out, when you get away from a microphone, it starts introducing echo. So the further you are away, the more ambient noise gets picked up. You can get background noise, you can get echo. One of the tricks to make almost any microphone sound better is to speak close to it, and that helps drown everything out. So if you are doing a presentation and you have some things to show, uh, just be mindful that it might be introducing a bit of echo. Hopefully the microphone's picking up things okay right now, uh, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Let me know in the comments below if you're happy with this sound when I'm further away from the camera, and let me know how you're happy with the sound, or if you're happy with the sound rather, as I'm closer to the camera. And I accidentally turned off AI tracking by talking with my hands. Now I'm going to do a low light test because one thing I have noticed on Zoom calls, on Skype calls, is not everybody has extremely good lighting. The better lighting you have, the better the webcam looks. I have quite a bit of lighting in this room because I do my YouTube filming here. But if you don't have a lot of lighting, sometimes what you can notice is noise in the video, just little white flecks or kind of a grainy picture. And sometimes frame rates suffer, the camera is struggling to maintain a good picture. Let's see how this camera does. So I'll turn off the left light, or maybe your right on the camera, and I'll turn off the right light. So I only have one light on right now, and that's just directly above, and it's actually pretty dark in here. So the auto white balance is working pretty well. I can notice the frame rate is taking a bit of a hit. So I'm a little bit more uh, jittery as I move around. You can see it's not quite as smooth as it used to be, but it's still doing extremely well. I only have one light. It's a lot darker than it looks on screen in here. So what I'll do now is I'll stand up and I will turn this light off. So right now, the only light coming in this room is from the glow on my monitor, which isn't very much at all, but it's really washing me out. So this camera is doing a really good job at picking up low light situations. So for the next test, I guess I'll just turn off my one monitor here. And now I'm in a very low light setting and the camera is still doing a pretty good job, but you can notice there's a lot more noise here uh, in the video. It's a lot more grainy. The frame rate is still doing pretty good. This is not too bad. I'm gonna to continue to move around here to see how the camera does, and it's doing a really good job at picking up my face still. So the AI tracking isn't really taking much of a hit at all with a low light situation. Next up, I'm gonna turn off another monitor. So this is an extremely low light situation, and one you probably wouldn't normally have video on for, one I wouldn't recommend having video on for. But the camera's still doing a pretty good job here. The motion is still relatively okay. So this is impressive. Now let's test out the AI tracking just for, just for fun to see how it does in a low light situation. And it's following me around pretty good. It's not struggling too much, uh, maybe a little bit when I get into a darker area. But when I'm well lit and closer to the camera, it recognizes me okay, but if I'm further back and my face is shaded, will it recognize me if I get to the back of the room here? No, no it won't. Now let's talk about the price. At the time of this video, the Osbot Tiny is retailing on Amazon for $199. And also at the time of this video, the Osbot team has mentioned to me that there might be a coupon for $30 off. That would bring the price down to $169. Nice. If there ends up being a coupon or if it's still active, check the description of this video and it should be there. But anyways, at this price point, the Osbot Tiny is in the exact same category as the Logitech Stream Cam. And the Logitech Stream Cam is the main camera I use on this YouTube channel. Now, if you are curious, here is the Logitech Stream Cam directly beside the Osbot Tiny. So this is a one for one picture comparison. Let me know which of these pictures to you looks better in the comments below. One thing that the Logitech doesn't have though is the facial tracking. So that's one of the coolest features here about the Ozbot. Uh, I wonder if I get all the way this way. So I apologize if you take a look, you'll probably see my Logitech stream cam. Um, right now I have it sitting on a box and manually holding it uh, to try to have it at the same level. So you might see my camera shaking just a little bit and I do apologize for that. 
but this should be a pretty good comparison of both cameras, so let me know which one you like. At this price point, I think the stream cam's picture is a little bit better. I find the Osbot really struggles with bright lights pointed directly at you. But even with the lights completely pointed away, I think the stream cam still wins an overall picture. Now I am struggling a little bit to figure out which camera to focus on while I'm talking in this video, so I'm going to turn the Logitech off. In terms of functionality, the Obspot Tiny is in a league of its own. It's got AI tracking, it's got gesture controls, and it's really just plug and play. You don't really have to fine tune anything. You don't really have to install any software if you don't want to. This camera just works. If you're looking for a camera that is pretty easy to adjust manually or something that will adjust on its own provided you want to move around a lot, the Obspot Tiny might be the choice for you. Overall, as a web camera, I am extremely impressed with this little device. It does have a few shortcomings. The picture isn't as crisp, I would say, as the Logitech Stream Cam. And also, if you're putting this on top of a laptop screen, it might be a little bit too heavy for it. But I mean, you can just attach the Tiny to a tripod and go from there. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. But really, as for video here, this is 1080p at 60 frames a second, which is relatively unheard of for a lot of webcams out there. The video is clean and crisp and smooth and I'm pretty happy with it. So at the end of the day here, the Osbot Tiny gets a pretty big thumbs up from me. It impressed me. It did a lot better than I thought it was going to. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on the Osbot Tiny in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.